Welcome to the post Thanksgiving Day edition of my show. Um, I do this typically once a year around uh, right after Thanksgiving and Black Friday and show the records that I bought. Uh, so I'm going to go through, I went to about uh, four or five different record stores or places that sold records on this trip up to North Carolina. Uh, started with a second in Charles in Charlotte. Uh, I've been to second and Charles a couple of times, just not to the one there in Charlotte and uh, did, didn't really find too much, but here's, here's what I took away from there. A lizard's calendar for a neighbor. Pretty cool. Our neighbors are from Pennsylvania and they really like lizards. Um, of course, we have them all over the place here in Florida. So I picked them up this uh, sweet calendar. Uh, then as far as records are concerned, I uh, really bought this. Uh, this is a very nice copy of Poly Rock's eponymous LP. Um, Poly Rock being a kind of a new wave indie band uh, from the 80s that I like. Uh, they put out an EP and an LP. This is the LP. And I already have a super nice copy of this, but this was $3, so I figured I'd grab it. And um, end up, I'll, I'll check this one against the one I already have and, and give the other one uh, to somebody else. I, I know plenty of people who would enjoy that music. Uh, first one I grabbed there was um, the first Cars album. Now, I haven't owned a copy of this for a very, very long time. It's starting to split a little bit, so I'll have to repair that with glue. Uh, but this was in super nice condition. It's on the old um, Electra label. Looks like one of the earlier pressings. Um, just a stupendous album if you've never heard it. And I believe that that actually completes my Cars collection uh, from the 70s and 80s Cars albums. Another album that I found there, this is just an EP by Bill Nelson. It's called uh, Living for the Spangled Moment. Um, they wanted, I don't know what this was. I think it was about two or three dollars. Uh, it was uh, three dollars. It's a six, uh, actually a seven song EP. Uh, has some of the B-sides from the album Get, Getting the Holy Ghost Across, which was a mid-80s uh, Bill Nelson record that I like quite a bit and I have on CD. Uh, so I think I have all of these tracks on CD, but I'd never seen this little EP before. So I uh, grabbed that one. And then finally, the last album that I got at uh, Second and Charles was a Players album that has uh, Baby Come Back. It's the only song I've heard off of here. Don't know much else about that one. This one was um, $3 as well. The next group of albums is from a record store called Noble Records in Matthews, North Carolina. It's uh, kind of on the south side of uh, Charlotte. And I've never been to this store before. They only opened about a year or two ago. Uh, I did have a lot of success there. It's one of those stores that has a very extensive uh, bargain bin with dollar albums. So uh, I spent quite a lot of time sifting through those. And I came up with uh, quite a few dollar albums. And then I bought some other budget albums. And uh, I even bought some... Um, what I would consider relatively expensive albums for me. So I'll go, go through the list, uh, show you what I got there. So out of the dollar bin, uh, I found this really, really great copy of Jim Stafford's first album. Uh, Jim Stafford is from uh, near where I live here in Florida. And uh, I've met him a couple of times. He's a great guy, extremely talented songwriter and guitarist. And uh, I already have a copy of this. I think I have a sealed copy. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. I might give it to a friend for Christmas, but I just couldn't pass it up for a buck. Uh, another record, uh, this is not too hard to find. Uh, I just really like the cover design and I love George Shearing. It's the best of George Shearing Volume 2. Uh, George Shearing, of course, the blind uh, UK pianist from the 60s and 50s, maybe even before that. Um, a lot of his stuff is almost uh, exotica, I would say. It's just really good uh, piano work um, with often vibraphone and uh, just a lot of the types of arrangements that I enjoy listening to. Um, this was a dollar. Really nice shape. Um, pick this one up. Don't really know too much about it. It's a Rick Springfield album that I'm unfamiliar with. I think it's one of his earliest ones. Um, that writing is is actually part of the album. It's not handwriting that somebody put on there afterwards. It's called Waiting for uh, Wait for Night. Uh, my wife is always bugging me to buy Rick Springfield albums, and 
the ones with the dogs on them and I never do so kind of compromised and I picked this one up but I do like Rick Springfield so hopefully this will be one of the better ones don't know anything about this release this is a spore on the Candide label has an interesting cover. Um, the Candide label is one that you find uh, Ligeti on, sometimes on Stockhausen albums, uh, some of the more avant-garde 20th century composers. And it was a dollar, uh, which was quite a good deal. So I thought that would be worth a shot uh, for a record in this nice condition. <clears throat> Don't know too much about this. It's a band called 16-Bit Where Are You? Four Versions. Uh, appears to be German um, from the early 80s. Looks like it might be uh, sort of Italo disco possibly or Austro pop. So I'm really not sure. I just thought I'd give it a try. Check it out. Uh, here's a record that I find quite a bit in bargain bins. I have a, a pristine copy of this. It's Bebop Deluxe's fourth album, Modern Music. Um, just grabbed another one just to have it and maybe check and see if I've got a, a, a nice inner sleeve. This one does come with the inner sleeve intact, which looks like it's in really good shape. So I might uh, check my, my other copies and see, uh, you know, if there's a part that I can take out of this one and use in another one and then <clears throat> figure out what to do with this one. I'll just have another extra copy of that. <clears throat> Here's a Roger Miller album, Do Wackadoo. Um, it's got some good songs on it. Most of these I've heard before. Uh, just fun 50s country album. Uh, a friend of mine kind of turned me on to his music uh, a few months ago. Although I knew King of the Road already, but uh, I like it. Good stuff. So that does it for the dollar albums. Now then for the uh, cheaper albums at Noble Records, I picked up uh, John Entwistle, Too Late the Hero. Uh, my favorite song on here being Dancing Master. Did not have this on vinyl. Um, just look at that bass. And a uh, really crazy back cover design, really. This was $2.99. It does have a little bit of writing on it, if you can see in the top right corner. Uh, but I've been wanting a, a nice copy of this for a while, and this is probably the best one I've run across recently. So I went ahead and grabbed that up. Uh, here's a fun Akron band, Tin Huey, with an intriguing cover there. This is called Contents Dislodged During Shipment. It was $4. Um, don't know too much about it. I've heard Tin Huey songs on Akron samplers before, um, <laughs> like the little button that says I'm for Akron. Uh, so thought I'd give this one a shot for 4 bucks. Uh, here's another one I, I skipped over. This was another dollar album. I think this might be an Italo Disco single, which is why I picked it up. It's on Ariola. It's a Fair Control Angel Eyes maxi single. Okay, then moving along, uh, I found a Kano record. Again, this has the Kenyan Helms writing on it, so a lot of these must have come from the same person's collection. Um, I think one had uh, $6.99 for this. It's New York cake. Uh, looks like it's in really good shape other than the writing on the front, which doesn't really bother me. And then a couple of jazz LPs. I uh, picked up this Joe Morello, Another Step Forward, uh, the drummer. Don't really know anything about it. I just read a little bit of the blurb on the back, and I liked the cover, and I thought it uh, looked like a good record. Uh, I think they, they wanted $7.99 for this one. Uh, this is one I'd actually been looking for for a while. Uh, Jimmy Webb's El Mirage for $4.99 uh, with his fantastic cover or his uh, original song, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Uh, it's my favorite song on here. It also has the song The Highwaymen, which was covered by the band The Highwaymen and gave them their name. Um, interestingly enough, uh, I've heard this record before many times. I love it. I'd been looking for a decent copy that didn't have a huge punch hole in it. So I got that one. I was happy to see that in the store. And same goes for this Bobby Hutcherson album, Color Schemes. Uh, this was also $4.99. Uh, it's a great vibraphone record. I picked up a copy of this about four years ago, and the disc was all scratched up. 
So I had my eye out for a decent priced copy to replace my scratched version and was finally able to find that at Noble Records. All right, and then uh, I picked up a Hugo Montenegro uh, album there, Dawn of Dylan. Uh, I've seen this one, never heard it. Um, so far I've heard about five Hugo Montenegro records and I really, really enjoyed them all. So uh, this one was $4.99 and I decided to shoot for a fifth or sixth time. So that was what I picked up the first day at Noble Records. Uh, really nice guys there. And I hope that they continue to stay open. They've had a kind of a struggle here with the COVID uh, this past year. Uh, I did go back the second day and I picked up this album, which was my most expensive purchase. Um, Ellie Golding's Delirium on white vinyl and really good shape. And they only wanted uh, 25 bucks for it. So I've actually wanted to pick this up for a while and just haven't pulled the trigger because of the price. Uh, but finally decided that was a good enough deal for me to go ahead and spring for a copy of this. So I just showed uh, the records from day one of uh, shopping in North Carolina, where I'd gone to Second and Charles and Noble Records in Charlotte. Uh, the following day, we, um, or actually the day after that, which was Wednesday, we went to Hickory, North Carolina, where I had had good luck at Crate Diggers Records and the Bottega in downtown Hickory. And uh, I wanted to check out an, an indoor antique mall, the Hickory Antique Mall and see if they had any vinyl. So I did do that. Uh, I went there first, I spent about an hour. Um, they did have quite a bit of vinyl. Uh, there was not a lot that I was interested in, but it was still fun to pick through. And as I was about to leave, I'd just gotten a call from my wife to meet her somewhere else downtown. And I thought I was done with all of the, the uh, vinyl stalls and I saw this one last stall and had to go check it out. And wouldn't you know it, they actually had some records that I wanted, so. Uh, at that stall, I found uh, this album by The Divine Comedy from 2016. It's called Foreverland. Uh, this is Neil Hannon's band. Just uh, excellent stuff if you've never heard it. Uh, most of my familiarity with this band is from their CD releases. So I was uh, very surprised to find a actual vinyl record by them there for $8 in perfect condition. So I snapped that up. Uh, also, <clears throat> in the bins, I found a copy of Japan's Gentlemen Take Polaroids. Uh, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but I can clean that up with some Sharpie. Um, the disc is in excellent condition, and it looks like an original UK pressing on the Virgin label. Um, the cover is actually not that bad. It doesn't really have any bends or wrinkles or anything, just a lot of edge wear. That was uh, $5. Uh, also, for $5, I found a copy of Howard Jones' first album, Humans, Humans Live. Uh, this has the shrink wrap on it. It has a hype sticker. I uh, just saw him in concert last fall at Ferg's in St. Pete, <clears throat> and I was really impressed. He puts on a great show, and I didn't have any Howard Jones on vinyl other than one single, so uh, I decided to get this one. Uh, another album that I picked up at the stall was Nancy Sinatra's Greatest Hits. I uh, really love the cover art. <clears throat> it's in excellent condition. Uh, I did have some of these songs already on other albums by her, but uh, this was a good thing to grab for, uh, I don't, can't remember exactly what I paid. I think it was around $5 probably. And finally, uh, Gino Socio's album Closer. This was $2, but it was in the half-off bin, so I got it for a dollar. Uh, the cover is a little bit rough, but the disc looks good. So that concludes my albums that I picked up at Hickory Antiques Mall. After the Hickory Antiques Mall, I went to the Bottega in downtown Hickory, North Carolina. Uh, upstairs in the Bottega is a record shop called uh, Crate Diggers Vinyl. And I think it's been there for about two years. And uh, once again, I had good success at the store. Uh, they have some very surprising things in there. So I'll show you the very first thing that I grabbed in my stack was this excellent, uh, beautiful copy of the Dukes of Stratos Stratosphere's Psionic Sunspot. Uh, this was a side project of XTC. Um, this album came out in 1987. 
and it was the first and only full-length LP that uh, the Dukes of Stratosphere released. And uh, this is not the copy that has the pink or the purple marbled vinyl. It's just a regular old Geffen black vinyl pressing, but I was still happy to find it. And I paid $25 for this. So uh, really, really exciting purchase. That was one of the coolest things that I found on this entire trip. Okay, I uh, couldn't pass this one up for $8, Lalo Schifrin's Black Widow on CTI. And last year I bought uh, at least one Nazareth record, which was signed and included promo material. I uh, didn't actually check this one for any promo material, but I doubt that it has any. Uh, this is Nazareth's album 2XS from the early 80s, which I have on CD. Used to own on vinyl, wanted to pick up another copy after I traded my, my original copy of it. This one's in, in great shape for $5, so that was a good one. Um, and the, I'm not sure exactly how much I paid for this. I paid $80 for the entire stack, so the $80 stick, stickers on there. But I did find this in the bargain bin, which I, I think they normally charge about 50 cents for bargain bin albums. Uh, this is Gritty Politi's Songs to Remember, and it is a virgin pressing. Uh, it's actually an Italian pressing, which is kind of interesting, after I did the research on Discogs. It's uh, their first album. I've never heard it. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Cupid and Psyche 85, and uh, had been on the lookout for this record for a while. So even though it's got a little bit of water damage, um, I picked it up for a very good price. Okay, this one was, uh, they wanted a dollar for this, but they threw it in for free. Uh, it's a bunch of Elvis Costello <clears throat> songs by uh, Elvis Costello, I guess, masquerading under different band names. I don't really know much about it. Um, haven't heard anything off of it, certainly, but it was in great condition. It's called Out of Our Idiot, and it's got a bunch of tracks on it. I think it's probably got about 20 tracks. So that one, just kind of a blind buy. Uh, this one, when I saw it, I just immediately put it in the pile. Uh, this is Roy Ayers' Ubiquities, Everybody Loves the Sunshine, uh, reissue, I think, from 2016. And what's special about this record is it is on this beautiful yellow vinyl. So I, I had already heard this record before and knew that I liked it, and they wanted $20 for it, which was a good price. So this is one of my best purchases from, um, from this uh, trip. Another $5 album here, The Best of Cal Jader. On Verve. Uh, I don't typically buy mono pressings and I didn't notice at the time this appears to be a mono pressing which is no big deal. Hopefully it'll sound fine. Uh, usually any Verve pressing if it's in decent shape sounds very good. So I uh, did not have this one. I probably have most of these songs on other Cal Jader releases but uh, for five bucks I decided not to pass it up. Uh, for ten dollars I found Gene Parsons album Kindling which was in excellent shape. There's the gatefold, what it looks like. Uh, some early Gene Parsons tracks. Gene Parsons, of course, one of the country rock elements of the birds. And uh, Clarence White uh, plays on this, who uh, was uh, an excellent uh, musician in his own right. He played on a lot of the birds tracks while well, he was a member of the birds during their later country rock period. And I'm very eager to hear what this record sounds like. Uh, I think it's it's got a lot of promise. And then the last record that I picked up at uh, Crate Diggers was Nice by Fat Larry's Band. Uh, unfortunately, Fat Larry is no longer with us. Uh, this was a sealed copy for $5. Has a very small hole punch at the bottom. A little uh, cut out there. Not too bad. I've not heard this record, but uh, I've got some other Fat Larry's Band albums, and I like them all. Well, on Black Friday, uh, we did our usual trip to McKay's, which is a big uh, media store in um, Winston-Salem. Uh, they moved a couple of years ago, and now they're in this giant uh, warehouse-type looking place. Uh, you know, it's a lot of metal and concrete. The old place was more like a kind of a quaint bookstore with a lot of wooden bookshelves and carpet and counters and stuff. So 
Um, it's a little bit different in there, but I still managed to find some deals. So at McKay's, uh, I spent a lot of time looking through their uh, budget records and their regular albums. Uh, I even picked up a CD there. Uh, I almost bought a couple of books, but I was really getting kind of loaded up, so I decided just to stick with the records. So one of the things I bought there at the case was this uh, Juliana Hatfield Sings Olivia Newton-John. It was a limited release on this uh, sort of pink and purple splatter vinyl. Um, had a lot of the Olivia Newton-John songs on it that I like. <laughs> so I don't know what it'll sound like. I'm not that familiar with uh, Juliana Hatfield. I know she was in the Blake Babies, but... Um, Looking forward to hearing that. I paid uh, $14.95 for this. So I figured if I don't like it, it shouldn't be too hard to trade. This is something I don't typically buy um, old Sticks albums. I'm a huge Sticks fan. I have most of their stuff already, but I did not have a copy of Cornerstone on vinyl. And a lot of times when you see it used, uh, the top part's all kind of battered up just because of the way this gatefold album is made. <clears throat> so you open it up and there's the inner sleeve sitting inside sometimes you even see just the inner sleeve being sold i guess because people don't realize that there's an outer sleeve that goes with the record <laughs> so uh they wanted uh five dollars for this they had a whole bunch of copies of this but this was the nicest one and um so I, I was finally able to pick up a decent copy of cornerstone for a decent price i was glad about that uh, believe it or not, I just recently discovered that I like Men at Work a lot. Uh, I found the Business as Usual, their first LP, uh, for I think seven cents last year. <clears throat> I played it recently, uh, really dug it. So I decided to look out for their sophomore album, Cargo, which you can also usually find pretty cheap. Uh, in this case, I paid $2.45 for it. Still got the hype sticker on it and the original price. Originally, it retailed for, uh, well, I don't know, $6.99, it looks like. So it's got the inner sleeve and everything that you'd want. Uh, for $10.95, uh, I replaced my old copy of uh, Defenders of the Faith uh, by Judas Priest. This might actually be my favorite Judas Priest record, but I did not have it on vinyl, had not owned a copy since the 80s. So I've been rebuilding big portions of my metal and pop collection over the years. Um, thought that was a pretty good price for this. It's in really good shape. Not a lot of ring wear on it. It is a little bit dusty, but that'll clean up. The disc is dusty too. Uh, and it does have the inner sleeve, which is in great condition actually. It's got a little bit of a ding on the corner there, but other than that, it's nice and crisp. Okay, uh, here's an album I think I might already own a copy of since I have just about everything by them. The Bay City Rollers, it's a game. It's a gatefold. Paid uh, $2.95 for this. Uh, usually when you find this album, either it's got a lot of wear or it's uh, got a hole punch on it or a, a saw cut. So uh, I was glad to see a decent copy of this with the Arista inner sleeve. So if I do already have a copy, this will probably be an upgrade for me. Okay, I found a uh, record by my friend George's niece, uh, Tune Yards. This is uh, called Nicky Knack. It's on the 4AD label. It's a black vinyl version. They also have a red vinyl version of this and I think maybe a few other colors. Um, they wanted $11.95 for this and I've been wanting to hear it for a while. Uh, I haven't heard anything by Tune Yards but I'm a big 4AD collector and it is George's niece so I thought I'd give it a shot. So picked up a copy of that. And to wind up this video, on uh, Black Friday after McKay's, uh, I really just had time to go to one more record store, and I was kind of almost wiped out, dare I say it, by that point. But I wanted to hit Underground Records, uh, which is in downtown Winston-Salem. I hadn't been there in a couple of years and decided to uh, go see what they had, so I did. Um, they don't have very much in the way of used vinyl. I didn't find anything in the bins. Uh, but they do have a really great selection of new stuff, and it's uh, reasonably priced. Um, there's some pretty surprising selections in there. And um, after about half an hour of shopping, I came away with two albums. Uh, this one, which I suppose is the new Mountain Goats album. It's called Getting Into Knives. It's, got, it's a double uh, gold 
edition. And uh, I, I've liked everything I've heard by the Mountain Goats. It seems like they just get better and better with each release. Um, the last one that I bought on vinyl was Goths, uh, which I absolutely loved. And so uh, I have high hopes for this record. Um, it says, the perfect album for the millions of us who have spent many idle hours contemplating whether we ought to be honest with ourselves and just get massively into knives. So kind of an interesting little blurb there. So I'm, I'll be checking this one out pretty soon, I'm sure. And then uh, last but not least, at Underdog, they had a copy of Mitski's Puberty 2, uh, which was $15.99. Uh, this is on the Dead Oceans label. And um, I think I ran across this artist uh, when I was checking out Phoebe Bridgers. And I was listening to this album and really liked it. It's some of the most creative music I've heard uh, produced in recent years. And I really wanted a copy on vinyl. So they just happened to have it there at the store. And I did forget, also at McKay's, I bought one CD, which was Ping by Stereolab, which they had for $3.95. And I was listening to that driving around uh, on Friday. So that's my Black Friday and my uh, Thanksgiving week purchases. Uh, all in all, 48, uh, 47 records, one CD. Uh, enjoyed doing the shopping. I like trying to keep these places in business. Uh, they probably like having me as a customer because I always go buy something. So uh, good luck to the rest of you out there. And I'm uh, curious to hear what some of the others got over uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Thanks.